So what's the name of this? This is Chinese. Chinese, yes. What's the name of it? Uh, Hu Yungai. Hu Yungai. Yeah. Hu Yungai. And then noodles. You also made noodles. Egg noodles. Wow. Anta over here. He can cook any style. And that is something interesting for our topic today. be asking yourself right now why am I looking at this why is Phil showing me this has Phil gone mad I think this is a perfect example of what fusion music is like when you take the road towards fusion the musical possibilities will be never-ending it's a concoction a mixture of styles a mixture of cultures an amalgamation of feelings and emotions first discovered fusion when a friend of my family gave me his record collection. Among those records were amazing treasures by this guy. When I heard these records, it really changed my life. It affected me in such a way that I was just captured. My imagination would soar as I would listen to the records over and over and over. One of the main things that captured me is how the music flowed from one style to the next. Combining so many different elements of all kinds of music, I really love that. If I listen to Weather Report, I could hear the black market in that song, Black Market. If I listen to John Luc Ponti, I could feel myself, my imagination, traveling through the stars. <laughs> there was so much to it. But when I got older, I realized to function in this genre, you really need a lot of knowledge from different areas of drumming. So not only different styles of drumming, but rhythmically, you have to be very strong in order to take from ideas from different styles of music in order to take from vocabulary of different styles of music. So what are the main things that you should know? In my humble opinion, the main things you should know are the cycles that we've been studying in all these workshops, mainly the one bar cycle, two bar cycle, three bar cycle, and four bar cycle. On top of that, you're gonna need experience with drumming from India, 
with phrases that they use a lot over there, like groups of five, seven, nine, ten. All this type of phrasing has become a main part of the vocabulary of great drummers that play fusion. So let's just have a look at that notation. This is the first cycle you should know. I should say rather that every musician should know this. This is most likely the oldest rhythmic cycle in existence. And although it can be displaced by using subdivisions, you should know this. You should have it internalized. The thing about rhythm is that depending on the time signature, it has different characteristics. So in this case, 6-8, it gives you a perspective of this rhythm. If it was a different time signature, it would be slightly different perspective. Now, when I say perspectives, that means that in Western music, they are used in these very popular ways. We all know what 12-8 feels like, 12-8 blues. If you put that time signature onto this phrase, that's the perspective you get. And if you put this into 4-4, four, four, this is the perspective that you get. You automatically hear funk or jazz or something else. Point is, you have to internalize all these things because eventually you use it in any time signature. Once you have it embedded in your system, you can access vocabulary based on these types of cycles. Now, all drummers in the fusion area, you know, most likely come from a jazz background. So they have a lot of this in their playing already. The next cycles we're gonna explore are also very important and they are also perspectives. The next cycle you should know is the two bar cycle. You can see here we have four main variations. We're just displacing it by one eighth note every time. You can hear this type of phrasing in shuffles, in jazz, in shuffle rock recordings. I mean, it's so popular. But the thing is, you should know the source of the vocabulary. And the source, what they're basing their vocabulary on, is this. The next group of cycles I'd like you to check out is the four bar cycle. Studying longer phrases like this really is very important for your time. And there's an iguana, <laughs> just saw. That. The next group of cycles I'd like you to explore is the four bar cycle. Four bar cycles are so important because they are longer phrases. They really help you to solidify your time, your ability to understand structure, and it gives you so much vocabulary to play with. Uh, I'm gonna give you examples in the next workshop. The examples are coming, but I just want you to be aware of them right now. That's the first step to be aware of all this stuff. Like him. You'll see that we have four variations of the cycle. I like to call them melodies instead of variations because it helps to sing them. If you can sing them while walking that's a very good thing. Uh, for example, if I'm if I'm walking right now, I have a pulse. One, two, three, four. Da 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 da. Okay, that's a real good exercise. You can try that exercise with all four variations. And this is the notation for the four bar cycles. You notice again we have four variations or melodies as I like to call them and they are displaced by one eighth note each time. The reason there are four is because mathematically that's all the possibilities there are using this type of notation. at this point why do I need to know this here's the thing anybody can keep a beat if you have seen the proliferation of children videos playing drums you'll soon realize 
that keeping a beat is not an issue. To function at a high level in music and to play music like fusion, which requires an intellectual stretch, let's say, to contribute properly to the music, you need to know a lot of stuff. You can't just keep a beat and copy things. The next thing I highly suggest learning about is odd groupings, groups of five, groups of seven, groups of nine. It's impossible to deny the influence of Indian music in fusion. There is so much crossover rhythmic vocabulary there that you really have to put in the time and invest in learning this. Each one of these things is a real deep rhythmic study. There's no way to compress everything you'll need to know about these phrases in one video. They each require their own separate video. But what we want to do right now is create rhythmic awareness to get you out of playing licks and patterns. You're never going to be able to reach your full creative level if you play like that. So what we have to do is learn about rhythm. Rhythm is our house as drummers. The next cycle is one of the most important in Western music and one that has changed the vocabulary of drummers the world over. following the workshops here in the magazine for a while now, you know the importance I put on these cycles. These cycles are something that every professional drummer knows. From Keith Carlock to Cliff Almond to Elvin Jones and Tony Williams, Roy McCurdy, myself, every top professional drummer knows these cycles. If you want to sound fluid, and round and you don't want to have a square phrasing you absolutely need to know this cycle that I'm not talking about patterns. I'm assuming that you already have a lot of that together. You can play a lot of different patterns. You may be familiar with some different grooves and you have a lot of independence to tackle that kind of stuff. 
One problem we have, I think, in the West is that we learn backwards. We learn first grooves and patterns, and then we learn about rhythm later. When you look at cultures that are really rhythmically advanced, like Africa, Cuba, India, they learn these things in parallel. They learn the language of rhythm in parallel to drumming skills like tabla or whatever. So what I would like you to do now is concentrate as much as possible on this. <laughs> you never know if there's snakes in the water or who knows what. But that's an unexpected thing that is good, like in drumming. When you can work on these things, when you can integrate them into your playing, your playing will be fresh, unexpected, not something that will paint you into a corner, let's say, artistically. You always have ideas, never-ending ideas. It's a beautiful thing. Now, let's go underwater.